Welcome to Patagonia. This South American site is known for its mountains, glaciers, forests. Where I'm at is in Torres del Paine. What I will be doing is actually staying right here in the center of the park and doing some of the most popular day hikes. So with that, let's go and explore some of the best sites that Torres del Paine has to offer. park with a lot of beautiful sights. There's one site that stands head and shoulders above the rest, Los Cuernos, the horns. The horns are actually the reason why I came to Torres del Paine. I saw a picture of the horns online and it didn't even look real, it looked like a fake mountain. I have been lucky enough to do some pretty incredible hikes in my life. Uh, some of the ones that come to mind are obviously those that I was able to do on the Everest Base Camp trek. Nagasong Peak, Amadablam, and other parts of the world, certainly in Iceland, the Italian Dolomites, uh, Sesera. All of these places stood out in my mind, and when I was there, I was thinking there couldn't be a place more beautiful than that. And uh, I have that same feeling, but on steroids now that I'm in front of, and I've just completed Mirador Los Cuernos, the, the big horn hike here in Patagonia. These mountains behind me are something that I just can't get over. I've taken so many pictures and so many minutes of footage expecting, I don't know, something different, but I just keep trying to capture this spirit that I feel when I'm here because it's just, it, it's astounding. One of these spots is called Mirador Condor. You just get unrivaled views of what they call the massive, which is the horns as well as Paine Grande. Paine Grande is the tallest mountain in the entire Torres del Paine National Park. At the very top of the mountain is actually a glacier. Be warned that if you are going up Mio del Condor, uh, it may get windy and the elements may not be terribly agreeable, but don't let that discourage you from, from trying to make it to the top of the observation point because, again, it does give you some of the most unrivaled views that you'll see in the entire park. The other ideal spot to get that perfect shot of the horns is in Mio del Cuernos. This hike begins at the largest waterfall fall in the entire park called Salto Grande. It may not be the biggest or most impressive waterfall you've seen if you've been to countries like Iceland, but it is the biggest waterfall in the entire park. The rest of the hike does offer you terrific views of the horns as you get closer. Eventually you will make it to this lake just before the horns. I think in normal conversation we throw around words like awesome and majestic a lot when they really don't apply to whatever we're describing. In this case, when you're talking about those cuernos, you're talking about the horns, those words really don't do it justice. You look at the mountain and it's something straight out of a, a fairy tale or a Lord of the Rings. You just don't see them. They just don't make them like that anymore. I really don't know what else I can say about, about the horns and, and their beauty. For me and my money, it doesn't get more beautiful than what you're seeing here. Gray Glacier is part of the Southern Patagonia ice field. It's not every day you get to see a glacier, especially this up close. It's really one of the most spectacular sights in the entire park, and I was thrilled to be able to see it. The first thing that you'll be impressed by is just how striking the blue color is. The glacier itself contrasted with the lake just gives it an, an, an unrivaled blue color that's, that, that is just striking. They will actually take pieces of the glacier and serve drinks using it as ice, which is very, very cool. And they'll let you take some of the glacier as you leave.
Unfortunately, this glacier is, is slowly dissolving, which is really tragic. Some glaciers in the world are, are maintaining, others are growing. Uh, this one is, is slowly going away. It's probably lost 19 kilometers of mass in the past 20 to 30 years. It should hopefully give you the urge to come and see it before it goes away forever or it changes from what it looks like now because it still is striking. The ice is, is, is large. You get up really close to this glacier and you see how high it goes. It's a beautiful, terrific sight, and one I can't recommend seeing enough. If you're interested in seeing uh, a real-life glacier, if you're interested in seeing just a striking and dazzling blue color, then make sure you put the Great Glacier on your itinerary, and you'll be glad that you did. Cannot beat Historia Peiwe's location. Right in the middle of the lake lies the most unique and probably the neatest location of any hotel in any part of this national park or maybe any national park. Historia Peiwe is located right in the middle of Peiwe Lake, one of the most beautiful lakes in the entire park. Notice the way to get there is this long bridge. It actually takes you a few moments to cross. But if you look to your right as you cross, or if you're just in the lobby and look out the windows, you'll notice those cuernos. People travel hours, if not days, to get good shots of the horns, as well as Paine Grande, uh, the, the mountain just to uh, the right you're seeing, or just to your left of the cuernos. And the fact that those are just literally in the hotel, you look out the window, or the hotel actually has a mini observation point where you can go out and view these sites, it's incredible. Now, there are all kinds of accommodations here within the park and just on the outside. Everything from free campsites where you bring all your own stuff to five-star luxury hotels. Uh, even glamp camping where it's kind of a mix of camping and, and luxury. Uh, and so there are a lot of hotels that I would say do a lot of things better than Astoria Peiwei does. Yeah, the internet is, is almost non-existent. The shower pressure is, is pretty lame, no real hot water. And those things, it's not like they're not important. But what is so great about this place is the view. You come here and you just get unrivaled views of some of the best attractions and sites here. It's also close to, or earlier in the video, we covered Mirador Condor, which is the observation point, which is about 30 minutes straight up. And uh, Mirador Cuernos, which is about an hour down this road behind me if you walk, five minutes if you drive. So the location, location, location. They say location can be everything. And in this case, they may be right. So if you're considering coming and staying at a hotel, I would recommend Historia Peiwe. I don't really have any major complaints about the standard room. It's pretty basic. You're warm. Don't let uh, silly little ratings online scare you away from trying to find a room at this place. Uh, you will not regret it and people won't believe you when you show them pictures of where you're staying. Again, not only is this the best location here, but it may be the best location of any park ever. Base Towers Hike. It is the most popular attraction in the entire park. This mountain range is actually a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. Believe it or not, all three of these towers have been scaled and climbed to the very top. I know looking at it, it may not seem logical or easy to do. Now, a word regarding the hike to get up here. It's called Mirador Las Torres. If I was going to rank a, a difficulty attached to the to the trail, I'd say it was quite difficult, or a very high difficulty. In average, it takes it should take you around three and a half to four hours to get up here. I, I kind of like most times when I hike, um, maybe took it a little too fast and got up here pretty quick in around two, two and a half hours. But there's a lot of climbing. When you do make it up here, take your time. 
enjoy the view because it's likely you spent a good few hours getting up here so uh, no need to rush to get back so do your best to come here and do the hike and when you, know, when you do make it up here congratulate yourself on a job well done take a rest pack a lunch eat it here if you'd like and then prep yourself for the uh for the long way back this view really is the view when you think about patagonia you think about this view you think about the towers another thing i'm really grateful for is that um, the the towers themselves aren't obscured by uh, any low-hanging clouds which unfortunately is another thing that some people uh, have to fight when they get up here. Make sure you check uh, the weather in advance. And if you are here for about three to five days within the park, realize that you can try and make this trek on the day where you have the best weather. It would have been obviously very disappointing to come all the way here, hike three plus hours, to just to see the peaks obscured. So please check with the weather the, the day before. Uh, even if the weather is a little cloudy the day of, it may move in and out as quickly as weather changes here in Patagonia. But do your best to try and make this hike on your best travel day so that you have this view as a reward. Spend enough time here in uh, Patagonia and you tend to see all types of weather uh, in just one day. Maybe not even just one day, but in like 15 minutes. You can see rain, snow, sleet, gale force winds, and in 10 minutes the sun is out and you're taking off all your layers because it's so warm or peaceful and calm. Wind is a very, very famous part of Torres del Paine National Park, and it's likely that if you do spend any time here, the wind will be blowing. Up here at the base towers, things are pretty calm now. I can just say that in general, I've been pretty fortunate with the weather here in uh, Torres del Paine National Park. This is a region of the world that is very well known for its very strong winds and you come here and sometimes you're just thrown back by these wind gusts that come out of nowhere. I felt it and uh, my camera has as well. It's uh, unfortunately tipped over and gotten a dent in it because of the winds here. But uh, that incident aside, I've been actually kind of lucky and that I've been able to avoid the worst. If you are planning a time to come to Torres del Paine, there are some good times to come, but you're going to be cold or have wind whenever you come. I'm here in February and uh, it's supposed to be a time in which the temperatures are a little higher and visibility is supposed to be decent but uh, wind is very strong. So it's one thing to consider as you're planning your Patagonian uh, Torres del Paine trip. Take into account what months you want to come down here and uh, invest in good insurance in your camera equipment because it may get beat up. Torres del Paine National Park was absolutely gorgeous. In the limited time I had here, uh, I can't say enough great things about the sites that I saw. Anyone who loves unique uh, nature landscapes must definitely put this park on their list to come and visit. For someone, not even an outdoor person, for someone who just enjoys all the, the, the diversity of beauty that nature has to offer, you should definitely make Torres del Paine National Park um, an item on their bucket list. And if you are considering coming here, don't wait anymore. Come here now and enjoy a short or a longer stay in what I consider to be one of the most beautiful places in the world.